We'll be going over the system design and creating diagrams for the web app that you'll be building out. The system design will be the technical solution for the web app that you'll be building out. I really want to make sure that I truly understand all the requirements and all the user stories. You want to make sure that all the trade-offs and the decisions that you make will satisfy the user requirements because you don't want to get to the point where you're halfway into developing and your approach doesn't work because you didn't read the requirements. So just by reading the user stories, my brain's already firing off on the different things that I need to implement. I need a way to upload the media. I need a way to apply the RGB splitting. I need a way to download the media. I need a way to do a progress indicator. So I have a lot of thoughts in my head that are scattered around. So I need a way to organize them in a way that I can visualize it and I can diagram it. So one thing I like to do while I'm at this point is I like to write down all the steps that a user would go through on his web app. By understanding the user flow and the user steps is then going to help me understand what are the technical steps that I need in order to implement the user steps. So let me just show you what I mean. So they're going to go to the website and they're going to upload an image. They're going to see a progress indicator. They're going to say that it failed. They're going to be upload an image. They're going to see a transformed images and then they're going to download the transform images. So let's take these steps and try to visualize it in a diagram. So let's see what we can come up with here. So I want a user, a user, they go to website and then they upload an image, but I need a way to store the image. So I'm thinking that I need an S3 bucket here somewhere. So at some point they're going to upload an image to S3. I do need a way to apply RGB splitting onto the images. Let me add Lambda. So somehow I need a way to trigger the Lambda. And then when I trigger the Lambda, I need to store the images back into S3. User goes onto the website, they'll upload an image. Then I'll perform RGB splitting on the image. Then I store the results back and then the user can download it again, right? So it looks something like this maybe. User uploads image. And then here we have like RGB splitting. So one thing I need to figure out is how we're going to do the progress indicator, right? Because there's no way to notify the user again. So we want to do some, some sort of polling, I think. So what polling would do is that we'll keep hitting the S3 bucket, asking it, hey, do we have the RGB splitted image of the original upload? So for example, if you have something like object one, then we can ask S3, hey, do we have red slash object one? Do we have blue or do we have green object one, right? We keep asking S3 if we have these three images. Once the Lambda finishes doing the RGB splitting on the images, the Lambda will upload this into the S3 bucket with this naming pattern, right? If this doesn't exist in the S3 bucket yet, then we'll know that the transformation hasn't been completed yet. But if these objects does exist, then we know that the transformation has been complete. So then we can go to S3 and show it onto the browser, and then we can let the user download the transformed image. So that is how I'm going to implement the progress indicator. So now we have a first draft and a rough draft of the user steps and the system design for our web app. So now we wanna go into more technical details of the technical steps that we need to implement. So I'll show you what I mean here. So first, the user goes onto the website and grabs the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Our Next.js application is going to help us with that. Then two, the user uploads an image to the browser. Then the browser sends the image up and uploads it to S3. And then S3 event source triggers a Lambda. So here, the user uploads an image to the browser. And then the browser here would upload it to S3. And then from S3, we have an event source. Anytime that an object or an image gets added onto S3, a corresponding Lambda will be called. So in our case, whenever we upload an image onto S3, we can do RGB RGB splitting through our Lambda, and then we want to put it back into the S3 bucket. Lambda will perform RGB splitting, and then the Lambda will store the RGB splitted image back into S3. And then now that I think about it, one thing I do need to figure out is we need to get pre-signed URLs. S3, you can have what's called a public and a private bucket. With a public bucket, anyone that has a link to your S3 URL can see and download the image. So we need a way to make it private. We're going to need something called a pre-signed URL. And what pre-signed URLs does is I can give my website and my Next.js application access to my S3 bucket. So the only way that you can access my bucket is through my Next.js application. It makes it something that you can't directly hit the S3 bucket, but you need to go through my website in order to access my S3 bucket. So because of that, we're going to need something called pre-signed URLs. When you upload an image to the browser, we need to generate pre-signed URL. It will allow the browser to upload the image into S3 with your pre-signed credentials. And then likewise, we need a way for the user to download the image and to pull for the browser to pull the image. So with these technical steps, let's create another version of our diagrams. So now I have a more technically detailed version of my system design. Compared to here where it's just more high level, this goes more into the technical details of what I need to do. User visits the website, then the user can upload an image. Whenever you upload an image, we need a way to get the pre-signed URL and then we need to upload the user image into S3. So with the pre-signed URL, the browser is now able to directly make a post request into S3 with these S3 credentials. So once you upload an image, 
then there will be an S3 event source that triggers a Lambda. So with this image, the Lambda has access to it, and then the Lambda can perform the RGB splitting, and then the Lambda can store results back into S3. Then meanwhile, the user is pulling on S3 waiting for the RGB splitted image. Then once it's there, we need a way to generate pre-signed URL so now we can grab the image from S3 and let the user download it. So this diagram gives us a very good technical overview of the thing that we're building out. But I do want to go into more details and have a very zoomed in perspective on like the Next.js and S3 interactions, the S3 to Lambda interaction and all the pulling interactions. So I'm going to create even more system designs and more diagrams going into more details. So here I have a technical overview and diagram of what happens when a user uploads an image. Once the user uploads an image to the browser, it'll make an API call to our Next.js application to something like API slash S3. Because the S3 bucket is going to be private, we need a way to generate credentials so then that we're authorized to upload to S3. So how it'll work is that the Next.js application will have AWS credentials to be able to generate the pre-signed URL from S3. So once we have the generated credentials to be able to upload to S3, the browser will do a post request to that S3 bucket with the image that the user uploaded. Then there'll be some sort of S3 event source that'll trigger a Lambda. The Lambda knows what object has been added into S3. So then the Lambda can take that image from S3 and then perform the RGB splitting on it. So now that we have a diagram of the upload flow, I do wanna make a diagram for the polling and the downloading workflow. So now we're going to be going over the workflow for what happens when a user downloads an image. So now at some point, the Lambda will upload the RGB splitted image onto S3. And at that point, we're now in a state where the browser can get the image from S3 and show it as a preview to the user. So once again, because this bucket is private, we're going to need to generate credentials in order to download the image from S3 onto the browser. So we need a pre-signed URL for this. So our browser is going to make an API call to our Next.js application where it has the AWS and S3 credentials. Next.js app is going to generate the pre-signed URL from S3 and then give it back to the browser so that we can download the image from S3. The browser has downloaded the image and the user sees a preview of the RGB splitted images. So now the user can click download and then they can download the image onto their laptop or computer. So now that we have the download workflow, the upload workflow, and the RGB splitting workflow, we now need to figure out the polling workflow as well. So this is how polling is going to work on our web app. So one of the requirements is that we need to show a progress indicator or some sort of loading bar that our image is currently being processed or not. When the user uploads an image onto S3, we're going to give that image a unique identifier and store that as the object key. This makes it so that if two people upload an image with the same name, they're not going to override each other in S3 because we gave it a unique identifier. They will be stored separately as two separate images in S3. So once the image has been uploaded to S3, it's going to trigger an S3 event source and we're going to have a Lambda do RGB splitting on the image. Once the RGB splitting has been done, we're going to have three different images. We're going to have the red version of the image, the blue version, and the green version. And then we're going to store all of that back into S3. We're going to store all the red versions of any image we process in the red directory, any blue ones in the blue directory, and any green in the green directory. So then the way our website's going to know if it's done processing an image or not is that it's going to ask S3 if the red, blue, and green version of their image exists in S3. If these images aren't in S3, that means the Lambda hasn't been finished processing and it hasn't uploaded those images onto S3. So then we ask again later, like maybe five seconds later, is the red, blue, and green versions of the image uploaded yet? If not, we do it again. Once the Lambda has finished processing, it's going to upload the red, blue and green image onto S3. And then the website is going to check again, does the red, blue and green version of this image exist yet? It'll say, yes, it does exist. So that signals to our browser, you are now able to download the red, blue and green version of the image from S3 and onto the browser to show it to the user. It's only when the Lambda uploads the image onto S3 is when the processing has been finished. With this polling, our website has a way to know if the image has been finished processing or not. It'll just keep checking S3 if the red, blue and green versions of the image has been uploaded or not. And with the polling diagram finished, I think we have all of diagrams we need for a system design. At the beginning of this video, we literally started with nothing. We first went through the requirements and the user stories and then walked through the steps that a user would go through for the website. We then created a first rough draft of what the system design should be. And then we went into more technical details on what the system design should be. Then from this high level overview, we then broke it down into even smaller design. We went over the technical workflow of what happens when the user uploads an image. We then went over how the S3 event source and the RGB splitting would work. Then we also went through how a user would download an image as well. And then lastly, we also went over how the polling would work for the user to know when the image has been finished processing or not. So from these diagrams, it'll give us a very good starting point for when we create the design doc, which will be happening in the next video. And with that, I hope you enjoyed watching me create the diagrams and the system design for my website. If you enjoy watching me build things out live and share my thought process, let me know in the comments below and also let me know what else you want to see from me in the future. All right, take care now.